When we left off, we were working on installing a forced air diesel heater on Makara. Something scary is about to happen. Guy's gonna cut my hair. Short. <laughs> Hopefully it's not payback. If you guys remember Three years ago, the very first time I cut Ty's hair, it did not go so well. So mm. hopefully this goes much better. I need to get the clippers to make it. <laughs> Here it goes. new uh, hatch I guess for our food storage cupboard we are routing out around the edges just a bit we're gonna we we're gonna put a little bit of trim uh, here it'll help hide some of the, the imperfections it'll add a little bit more detail we've done the same thing over here with our this is our fridge hatch here and if you see up close on that we've routed a short little slot around here and that'll allow us to put this nice little trim around the edge of our fridge. So it'll just be a little more detail and it'll look quite pretty. It's starting to curve by there. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. I'll go like, I wouldn't go back any further. <laughs> We're in the aft cabin on Makara back here, and we have a project today we are going to do to try and make Makara a little bit more watertight. We've had a lot of rain recently, and one of the leaks we've known about for a long time is through these bolts right here. This is our traveler. It's right behind the cockpit. Um, it's through bolted all the way through from up top down into the cabin here. We can get to all the bolts. So we are going to pull it off and re-bed it with some butyl tape and hopefully stop the leaks coming in. As you can probably tell, there's no headliner in this section. We haven't actually touched anything in the aft cabin back here. We've been focused up in the main salon, in the forward cabin, but this part of the headliner in the aft cabin was already pulled down previous to us purchasing the boat. So that's good. It makes it easy to access all of the deck hardware. Taking the Traveler off was a pretty easy project overall. It took one person above deck to hold the top of the fastener, and one below to take off the nuts and washers. We've got our uh, Traveler off. It came off quite easily. There wasn't actually much adhesion to it, to the Traveler itself. Um, Hillary's now working on cleaning up the old butyl. So it wasn't installed too badly. Uh, they've used butyl to install this traveler. The only thing that we're going to do different is all these holes uh, that were bolted through on the traveler uh, are not countersunk. That it looks like. It looks like they're straight holes. And generally you want to have it like countersunk or camphored so that butyl kind of gets forced into uh, a bit of a recess. Instead of it just being squashed flat, you'll kind of want it to be kind of forced down a little bit and around those bolts. So that's what we'll do different. We'll countersink each one of these holes and then we'll clean up the butyl. We'll clean up the screws a bit as well and probably the bottom of this traveler will need a bit of a clean up as well. Uh, and then hopefully <laughs> we'll stop some leaks. After countersinking the bolt holes, I cleaned up and prepared the surface for butyl. Then I started by placing a patch of butyl tape under each hole in the channel on the bottom side of the track. Then I made a small donut out of butyl to sit in each countersink hole. Finally, I put a collar around each bolt head. The 
bottom of our traveler is all cleaned up now. We've drilled countersink holes going through the deck and filled those with butyl. We also have butyl backing on the traveler and little collars around the top of the bolts. Now it's time to lay it down and tighten up the bolts and nuts. Pretty simple. going on these beautiful new expensive hatches from Luma were leaking right through here this is where the hinge plates were if you can see that and we're getting leaking coming through the screw holes and we know someone else that was having the same problem basically there's a little foam gasket under here that we think wasn't really sealing right I don't know why, it looks like it kind of should, but he replaced his with butyl tape and he seemed to fix the problem. We're going to do the same. We do have new gaskets that Lumar sent us, but this is the second exact hatch. Uh, brand new and they've both leaked in the same place. Yeah, it's a bit disappointing. Right. A little follow up here for our slide issue on our new mainsail. We've been working with Precision to try and find a solution. As it turns out, there's really only one main brand that's readily and easily available, and that's Bainbridge and there aren't a whole, they have a ton of different slides, but the sizing is very incremental. So what Precision did, they sent us a size down for us to test. That was definitely too small. It looked like it would just totally pop out of the track if there was any sort of pressure in it. It did move freely, but not something that we want on the sail. So since we didn't want to downgrade to the smaller slide, the other option is to modify these slides that we have. We think the older ones either were just very worn or past versions of it were ever so slightly smaller. So this is a slide we've built a little jig to cut it down rather than guessing and sanding. So it has a, now it has a thinner base. And look at this, it slides. The slide slides. <clears throat> look at that, it's just goes. what we wanted. Well, what this clarifies too is, is that it was the, uh, the flange depth was the problem for us. Uh, and it was minuscule, like a fraction of a millimeter. So I think it was, I want to say three and a half mil was the actual flange depth. So right there, this, this thickness right there. That's our flange depth. That's the flange. And again, the original slides we had were the same slides, an older version, the original version. So there may have been some variation or a lot of wearing, but this is the flange that Hillary's dad built a jig for and Fred was able to get that set up really good on a table saw. So our next step now after doing this test one is going to be cutting each of those down as they sit on the, on the sail. Yes, that will be a project. Stay tuned. For when we return. Cut! Pulling up anchor. We are going to move Makara, not far, but a little ways. We're only gonna go oh, a few hundred meters that way, probably. Maybe, yeah, probably about a few hundred meters down there. Uh, and there is a reason behind that, but basically we've been here in front of the uh, public jetty here for a little while. And there's a limited amount of time you're really even allowed to be in one of these places due to laws and so on. Um, there's th sometimes they're enforced, sometimes they're not enforced. But uh, Makara might be on her own for a little bit. Well, up here, the little hatch, and I'm gonna flake this chain, because we have our chain comes quite a ways back here. Okay, I'm good! Sorry for the loud. There. All I'm gonna do is pull the chain. As Hillary brings that up with the windlass, I'm gonna pull it through and flake it back. 
Otherwise, it's all going to bunch up up here in the bow at the tangle. So you want someone down here to kind of put, flake it evenly so it doesn't tangle the next time out. Uh, one of the big parts of having it come back here is it's very helpful for weight distribution. Uh, chain is obviously very heavy when you've got an all chain uh, road, which we do. And this chain would weigh, I don't even know what it weighs, I have to do the math, but you're talking like 300 plus pounds all the way in the bow. So the further aft you can get that stuff, the better it's gonna be for your sailing performance, for the overall kind of safety and integrity of the boat, really. You don't wanna have like hundreds and hundreds of pounds pounding into waves up on the bow if you can help it. What's up? Where to? Off to the boat ramp with the dinghy to take the dinghy home. Well, it's not too bad of a day here today. Beautiful. We're gonna head somewhere a little chillier. everything thanks guys appreciate thanks so much for watching Huge everyone out there to all of our patrons and all of you guys for watching your comments subscribing all that good stuff and until next time bye bye adios adios, adios.